It is not surprising that the experiences of South Asian students in the United States are just as nuanced as the countries their families originate from. From the pressures of assimilation to the stereotypes of being model students, this segment will aim to bring light to the true identities, dreams, and aspirations of this growing population of students in the United States. Today's session features four high school students, and I'd like to introduce them to you now. First, we have Rahul Yates. He's a sophomore from Los Angeles, California. He is the founder and executive director of Humsub Global Team, an organization that raises awareness and builds community for multicultural and multiracial teams. We have Sukhmani Kakar. She's a junior at the Holton Arms School in Potomac, Maryland. She serves as the junior president for the South Asian Culture Club at her school. Sukhmani enjoys music of all kinds and participates in both Western and Indian music mediums, particularly singing and Punjabi Bhangra. Hamza Rabini is currently an 11th grader at the Nueva School in San Mateo, California. He is passionate about technology and also enjoys reading the news, playing squash and debating. At school, he helps lead the Muslim Student Alliance, a group that promotes discussions around and engagement with Islam. And finally, we have Anya Singh. She is a sophomore at Montclair Kimberly Academy in New Jersey. She is a founding member of a nonprofit organization called Connect Global, which aims to connect youth globally to drive academic success across underprivileged communities. And finally, I am pleased to introduce Anu Segal. She is the founder of the Culture Tree and will be moderating our panel today. So Anu, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neelam. Thank you, Tony. And thank you, Asia Society for having this event with us, which is a very critical conversation. And uh, especially with that the team. has changed how you identify yourself has changed over time. And um, if we can follow the same order, please. So Rahul first. So as I mentioned before, I'm multiracial. And with that, the way I identify with my race and ethnicity can change over time. And it has. When I was younger, I would only tell people that I was Indian because I felt like I didn't really gain anything from my white side. And I just, um, and over time that has evolved to now, I will identify as a multiracial South Asian because I've just become more aware of my race, society, and, um, and myself. Your experiences. So we are switching gears now towards racial biases. On the scale of one to 10, one being never and 10 being often. How often have you experienced racial and cultural biases in school or in life in general? Um, so I wouldn't say that I've straight up felt racial bias in school because one, my friend circles growing up were primarily Indian. And two, even in the, the new school that I'm in right now, I've surrounded myself with accepting people of many different cultures and teachers who want to know about me and my culture. However, there have been times where I've been in a primarily white setting where I'd see these girls walking around and being confident in themselves. And I think it wasn't until I was a teenager and a little more self-conscious that I started caring about what others thought and caring about the fact that I wasn't part of that category. So I don't, I wouldn't give it a set number because generally everything I felt about race was really all in my head. So I think it was important to me, for me to become more secure in myself and secure in my culture because I know that I, I like it and want to embrace it. So I've started doing that a lot more now. Yeah. So if I could, I'll briefly add on to that because I really agree with you. Um, I think a big issue when talking about Asian, any kind of Asian, East or South Asian, um, racial issues is that it has been so normalized in Western culture to be stereotypical towards South and East Asians that people don't really notice anymore if like somebody makes an offhand comment about somebody's accent or somebody's looks or somebody's like, like you were talking about dance like all that kind of thing has become very normalized and like funny like it's a joke right and so I think racism towards Asians is like a little bit more implicit than racism towards other races. And so that's why combating it or even like recognizing it when it happens in the moment is really difficult, especially if you're like with your friends and somebody makes an offhand comment, right? Like it's not super obvious. So um, I think I've experienced like microaggressions like that 
quite a few times. I live in a very white dominated area, but um, I think it is a little bit more nuanced than some other some other uh, racial groups if we were talking about like profiling and microaggressions. There are three, but I think that has more to do with my religion than being South Asian. Um, I think in general, there's a lot of misunderstanding about Islam and um, what Muslims stand for and believe in. And I think that's been fueled by figures in the media and world events. And um, I think what I would call just kind of a general lack of effort to understand the religion. So I think um, having grown up in schools where I've largely been the minority and been surrounded by mostly white communities, um, I think I've seen that among my peers and my friends. But apart from that, nothing really distinct comes to my mind when it comes to racial bias. Yeah, I definitely want to um, echo what Rahul and Sukhmani just said. I think even as South Asian students, even if it's not explicit racial bias, I think um, it's a challenge in itself to be surrounded by people who misunderstand your culture um, and where you come from. Right, right. Um, now just switching gears towards um, what you guys have done. Um, and I want to start with Rahul and Anya because you have uh, founded your own organizations. So if you can talk a little more about your inspiration and what you wanted to do. But the question for everyone is, if you could do anything about racial injustice, what would it be? With that, we will wrap up this session. Thank you so much, Hamza, Rahul, Sukhmani, and Anya for being a part of this discussion, this very important discussion. You guys, all four of you are amazing, insightful, and inspiring voices. Um, and with that, I'm going to thank everyone for joining us and pass it back to Neelam from Asia Society. Thank you, Anu, very much for the great moderating. And thank you all panelists for your honesty, your thoughtfulness, and advocacy for the South Asian community. Your ability to communicate your experiences, understand various perspectives at a very high level, and most importantly, your desire to take action on these issues and really, speak, really, really speaks to your high level of global competency. And that's what we are all about at the Center for Global Education. So thank you very much. Um, you have inspired us and uplifted us today, and I am very excited to see what all of your futures hold for you. I'm sure very big things. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, and for our audience, we are definitely going to keep these conversations going over the coming months. Um, please be sure to stay connected with Asia Society as we will bring more discussions about race, identity, and culture through our Teaching Truth to Power series. We look forward to seeing you all soon in the new year and have a great afternoon. Thank you.